Hey guys, here's the thing you needed the most but never knew about. See this? <laughs> Woo! Well, this is it. We reached the absolute peak of gaming. Yep, I have a few things to say about modern games. Most modern video games have proven to be a disappointment time and time again, so obviously the next best thing to do is take a time machine and travel back, holy shit. The next entry in the CCU, Celeste 64, is what would happen if the hit game Celeste was suddenly put on the Nintendo 64, kind of. But instead of controlling like a tank with whatever this is, you can actually use a proper controller for a changer. God forbid this thing. You know Celeste. Everyone does. What's that? You know Celeste. Celeste is a 2D platformer with a lot of dashing, a lot of berry collecting, and a lot of Basically, it's a very good game. Celeste pretty easily slides into the category of games I call play these 2D platformers before you die or else I will be the one laughing at your funeral. However, by the time Celeste was being released, everyone and their mother was taking a jab at the whole indie 2D platformer shtick, and so a lot of people were like, I ain't playing that, please. Mm. Please. Uh, fine, fine, fine. A player, dumbass. Metaphor for depression. But even then, some people just don't like 2D games. I would know because my shit ass friends, you know who you are, refuse to play Hollow Knight because it's 2D. Go fuck yourself! <clears throat> some people just don't like 2D games, which is an opinion. So the devs are like, you know what, fine. You don't like 2D games, you don't like fun. Here. Now shut up. In Celeste 64, you control who else but Celeste, the girl with magic hair and color changing properties. Only for the hair, however, the eyebrows are not blessed by such a thing. Celeste's eyebrow game is not strong enough. And you can use said magic abilities to explore a location either heavily inspired by or directly copy in the real life city of Pripyat. Immediately, there's something eye catching about this game in relation to its glorious former self, and I'll give you one second to figure out what. That's right, they turned Celeste into a Funko Pop. Everyone's already given a jab at the whole what if 2D game 3D thing, and while I appreciate the beauty of remaking a game and the passion that goes into it, more often than not, I'm left feeling as though this just doesn't feel that right. It's a similar thing to that Mario in Unreal video. What is he doing there? So then, what now? What now is that we take a bunch of brilliant and creative minds, cram them in a dark closed room and force them to remake a game from 2D into 3D in a week. So nothing out of the ordinary for the gaming industry. Exactly. Immediately I want to congratulate the team behind the game and also Celeste for finally being allowed into first grade. Because while well, yeah, you can sometimes notice the game was made in a week-ish and only has one area and sometimes my death perception is all fucked and there are feathers from chapter 6 here for some reason, it does little to diminish the genuine brilliance behind this formula. It's something that rarely goes wrong, even less so with such talent behind Oh, oh, so that's gonna play every time I collect it. Celeste 64 was made by the original Celeste team, and while the perspective and dimensions have shifted, it does not for even a second feel like I wasn't playing the original game. I reckon they want to preserve a little bit of that through the visuals, which still have the pixelated look seen in Celeste with even the menus having a lower resolution desk to feel... I don't know, old? Didn't strike me as all that necessary, honestly, but the transition to 3D is so seamless, it ended up mattering so little at the end of it all. It reminded me a lot of this Saturn S game I played a while back called Lunastice. Saturn S? I don't know, I wasn't born yet. The gameplay is almost a one-to-one -one high fidelity recreation of the base gameplay from the original. Dash, climbing, wall jumping, momentum conservation, dash refills, pink dash refills from chapter 7, golden feathers from chapter 6, moving platforms in chapter 1, it's all here. Except it's not all here, I lied, it's not all here. But what is here is great fun. Each mechanic works basically like it did in the original, even allowing for similar exploits to be used. But one thing had a pretty noticeable buff. The time you can spend climbing on walls was drastically increased, and by drastically increased, I mean you don't get tired anymore. Pretty nice. This time around, you're not thrown into a level to level sequence, but instead a small open world to explore, which, in my opinion, helps this game differentiate itself from what could be left feeling like a simple fan game or a mod for another platformer. Because, yes, despite the runtime totaling at approximately 2 to 3 hours, this feels less like a mere game jam project and more like an experience that devs behind it plan on maintaining, almost as if it was made by the actual Celeste team. Of course, it's Celeste we're talking about, so the sizable amount of mechanics has to account for something. And it does by providing a challenge ranging from stupidly easy to, at times, decently challenging and frankly terrifying.
and should the developers continue supporting this game, I would gladly throw my wallet in the ring for a full version. Hell, I could even help out myself. Here is a Celeste and a Theodore I drew my precious spare time. My beautiful children. Much like the original Celeste, Celeste 64 is a test of the player's technical skill, but also, more than ever, a test to their ingenuity and skills in puzzle solving. And nowhere is that more apparent than within the speedrunning community. Celeste is famously one of the most speedrunnable games in current times, and here it's no different, despite this game being so young it could be subject to an abortion. To finish Celeste 64 in the eyes of speedrun.com, you must find Celeste's twin sister, purple hair and pronouns. And while you could do that the intended way, which involves... Might I interest you in this speedrunning clip? This game was released 9 days before this video. The OST was once again tackled to the floor and beaten 17 times by Lena Rain, who surprise surprise did an amazing job of fucking nailed it once again. You see, for the world to keep spinning around, there is a few universal constants humanity must live by. And that's that there are some franchises out there that should never have a bad song in their OST, and guess what, we're currently on the way towards human catastrophe, so thanks Sonic Forces! Speaking of music, this. Whatever the hell it is, that's right, this game also has... The cassette tapes and b-sides are present here, way more tuned down than the original but still with a higher difficulty spike. Not for me though, I'm a professional gamer. A gaming mastermind like myself would have no problem with collecting every strawberry in the game, I just choose not to out of being humble towards the fellow gamer. So is Celeste 64 just that? Uh, yeah. And you think this warrants an entire video? Honestly, what's going on with your head? Uh, you, you stupid? What, what about that Nier Automata video? Do you really think this fucking game, Jane game, uh, warrants an entire video? Really? Yeah, I'd say so. This is one of them games you pick up and say, I just think it's neat, because that's precisely what it is. No, Celeste 64 is not winning any awards, it's not a groundbreaking technological innovation, and really who the fuck thought it would be? It was made in a week, but what it is, is a damn nice experience. And a free one. And also Theo is here. I forgot to mention him. Hi Theo. So, my final verdict on Celeste 64 is, just, just go play the game already? Fuck off.